Connor Ingram has been such a huge success. Rico robbed by Connor Ingram. Puts it back door, gets a rob by Ingram. He's been absolutely sensational for them. Right to the front, and it's covered by Connor Ingram. Comes across a shot and a block. Great save by Ingram. Each and every game, this guy's been money so far this season. Right there, Connor Ingram. Oh. He's getting another opportunity. It's a great story. I'm happy for him. I'm proud of him. And I'm sure his teammates are really happy with the way he's playing. Well, you heard our resident goalie, Kevin Weeks. Connor Ingram has been money all season long. Look at his numbers through 23 games. 13 wins, the 2.61 goals against average, 916 save percentage, and more importantly, four shutouts. Tied for the most shutouts in the NHL with Tristan Jari. Amelie Benjamin of NHL.com joins us now on NHL Tonight. Uh, Amelie, I know you had a chance to chat in depth with Connor Ingram a couple of weeks ago, and, and we hear the term OCD a lot, but not everybody knows what that specifically means. Uh, what was Connor Ingram's suffering from and what would he go through every day because of it? Yeah, absolutely. It's a term that gets thrown around uh, when people uh, mean that they're excessively neat or, or um, very particular about something, but that's really not what it is. And that's really not what Connor Ingram went through. I mean, he had days where he he would um he was his one of his obsessions um related to contamination so for him a big issue was you know uh germs and even thinking that he had sexually transmitted diseases so he would check himself every 10 minutes every five minutes every four minutes to make sure that that he wasn't infected and it's something that really took over his life um and culminated in january 25th 2021 and him entering the nhl nhlpa player assistance program to deal with this, to get help, get therapy. And um, he has come out the other side. It's not something that, that ends for anyone. It, it is something that continues throughout your whole life. He will, as he told me, he will be in therapy. He will sit and, and talk, tell someone his problems for uh, the rest of his life. But he is so much better and he is in a place where he can do what, what you just said, that he can be sort of the surprising star on this surprising team uh, with the Coyotes. Uh, you mentioned how bad it got and how it overtook every day of his life, but there was a point where he almost gave up on it. Uh, take us through that decision and, and how he did come to the uh, conclusion to enter the NHL NHLPA Players Assistance Program. Yeah, the team was in Dallas. It was January 2021, and he was part of the taxi squad for the Nashville Predators, which actually was a stroke of incredible luck for him. He, he was late to the rink in Dallas one day, and that is not something that that he has ever done, that he has done before or done since. And he sat down with the goalie coach, the, the goalie coach there in, in with the Predators, looked at him and said, you know, something's wrong. And, and Connor said, yeah, we need to talk. And he said, I, I'm done. I'm done with this. I can't do this. I'm just going to go home. And um, the goalie coach there uh, said, you know what, there might be another choice. And within an hour, he told me he was on a plane to California, entering the program, getting inpatient treatment for 40 days, and that really changed his life. How important has it been in the recovery process to have other players to talk to, like Colin Wilson, who's who's been candid and public with OCD and in his journey through that, uh, and then seeking the help and getting the help from the program? Absolutely. It, it is something that I, I was able to talk to Colin Wilson a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, to sort of put this all in context, what it's like to go through this and how the attitudes around the NHL have changed in relation to mental health and, and in relation to getting help when you're faced with a situation like that. And it has been tremendous. The two of them are in contact. And, and Connor Ingram said that he has other guys who have contacted him to talk about this, to talk about going into the program or talking about uh, going through some of this. There have been a few other people who have been public about what they have gone through. Mark Borbieski, for example. Um, so it, it's not an isolated incident and, and or an isolated example of, of OCD in the NHL. And it's something that I think uh, it's very clear that the NHL and, and players are being more uh, there. It's more accepted. It's more open. Um, I think they're reaching out and finding help. And then when they come back to their, their NHL teams, they're respected for their decisions and they're accepted. And that's something that was clear through a number of people that I spoke to about uh, about Connor and about other people who have gone through this. I know the start of Connor's recovery came while he was with the Preds in Nashville. Uh, how tough was it? Did he talk about having to leave maybe the security blanket that was Nashville after being claimed by Arizona? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it was, you know, sometimes in these situations, it's tough. And sometimes it's, sometimes you need a fresh start. I think uh, Arizona, there's no question that they were very excited to have him. They had been tracking him for a while. I was talking to uh, their GM, Bill Armstrong, and, and he said, we were really hoping that they would waive him, that they thought that he might be uh, a difference maker for them. And and he has really settled into Arizona. It was, it was interesting when I was doing this story so many people from the Coyotes uh, organization, players, said to me, you will love talking to him. He is a great guy. He is so good to talk to. And it was interesting. I had talked to people with the Predators, and and he had been a little bit closed off there. It was it was hard to be, um, you know, full-fledged member of a team when you're hiding something that is, is really taking over your life. And I think in Arizona, he is able to be himself, who is a gregarious, funny, open guy. And, and that makes a huge difference. How's he doing now? I mean, we show the numbers. He's having a great year on the ice. But how's he doing off the ice personally it's always day to day you know i think there are some things that he is um he he tries to do some exposure he has done lots of exposure therapy but he tries to see how much he can take and there are things that he have said he has decided in his life that it's not worth it we talked about giving high fives to fans for example and that's something that he really shies away from and so any fans in arizona who who don't get a high five from connor ingram they should know that there, there's a reason he's he's not being unfriendly he doesn't want to uh skip you he he isn't being a jerk this is something that he needs to do to protect himself um foreign hands that he doesn't know where they've been what contamination they might have that could ruin his day, could ruin the next day. So he has really taken a, a day-to-day -day approach. As I said, he's still in therapy. He's going to continue to be in therapy. And he is doing the things that he needs to keep himself in a good place and, and expose himself a little bit. But certain things, for him, it's not worth it. Obviously, talking to you and, and having us talk about him publicly here is a big step for him. And in his recovery, uh, does he feel comfortable yet being a spokesperson for this situation, OCD, in professional sports or just in life in general? Does he want that role coming forward? Where is he at as far as the, the public um, situation going on with, with his and what he's dealing with? I don't know that anyone necessarily wants to be a spokesman for this. It's something that is very difficult. But I think what he prizes is being able to let people uh, know that that you can succeed. You can whether you have this, uh, you can get past it or or work with it. Um, and I think it's important to him to be open to to be ex accepting to make people understand that you know everybody's going to have something, and this is his something but he's working through it. He's getting better. And that for, for other players, for other teammates or people around the NHL, that the, the assistance program is somewhere you can turn to. That for him, it has been wonderful. It has been uh, really life-changing, life-saving. And so I think for, for many people, like I, we mentioned Colin Wilson, Connor Ingram, I, I think they have taken it upon themselves to make sure that this is something that is talked about in the NHL and professional sports. It's not something that's swept under the rug or hidden. Um, you know, Not every player is going to feel comfortable enough to tell their story but they're saying it's okay if this happens to you whether you are public about it or not you can get help you can you can you can move past this I'm like great stuff and we appreciate you sharing his story and there's there's so many more details to the story I uh, like I said it's on NHL.com right now it's such a great read and we appreciate you shining some light on some of the stuff that we don't get to see on or off the ice in professional sports so great job by you we appreciate it Thanks, Jason. I'm Lee Benjamin of NHL.com. Uh, look, these you guys know it all too well. Not just robots. They're people. And could you imagine trying to deal with something like he had to deal with while playing that position no. in the National Hockey League? Yeah, it's just so many different aspects of a goalie with his equipment in general yeah. and how it's going to be dried out and everything. But uh, what a valuable interview that was for mm -hmm. the NHL Network. To yeah. I think for all the boys and girls, if you have a problem, seek out somebody. Don't think you're macho. We talked about it earlier. You know, we know this is a manly game and a woman's game, mm -hmm. but don't think that somebody is going to tell you they're not going to help you. Yeah, and I, I think that's what these stories do exactly. is help somebody out there who may be dealing with something, who Better wants wear, to internalize yeah. it. I mean, back in, when you guys played, it, this wasn't a thing, right? You wouldn't want to no, or, or wouldn't felt comfortable to. standing up in that locker room sharing this type of information because you were probably worried about your job security at that point. Well, you certainly were. Yeah, nobody would come out with these kind of, uh, you know, with any kind of issues. But, uh, you know, he should be uh, obviously applauded, mm -hmm. you know, just that awareness. And it, it, 
you know, it makes me want to learn more about it as well. And if he can help somebody else, anybody else, if just that one person, that's that's huge. Yeah. And the NHL does a fantastic job now. Just yeah. Support. Hey, if you need help, you say they you don't need, need help. To have your like name she said, within an hour, you're on a plane. You yeah. help quickly. Incredible stuff. Uh, we implore you to go and read up on this story. It's a tremendous story. And like I said, there's so many details that we didn't even get to dive into. But uh, incredible stuff. And we're rooting for Connor Ingram and what he's doing out there in the desert.